Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, stopping distance. The total stopping distance of a vehicle is actually made up of two component parts. The thinking distance, that is the distance that the driver covers as they respond to whatever it is that's prompted them to put their foot on the brakes in the first place, some sort of hazard in the road or something. And the braking distance, which is how far the car travels once the driver is applying the brakes until it comes to a complete halt. And I'm going to look at each one of these in turn. Now the big error which people tend to make is mixing up the thinking distance with the braking distance. That's the thing that you've got to watch out for. Make sure you're talking about the right one because expect that they will specifically ask you a question where if you talk about the braking distance and it's a thinking distance question, you'll get the answer wrong. Now for the most part, what they're looking for is what things increase the thinking distance and what things increase the braking distance. So first off, thinking distance. There are three possible answers which they will accept and only these three. These are the only three which you really need to worry about. Firstly, if someone is drunk and to a further extent if they're on various different types of drugs. Now, yes, it's true that things like caffeine can actually improve your reaction times and thus shorten your thinking distance. They don't care. Just assume that if they're asking about someone who has been uh, drunk or who's been taking drugs, they're looking for you to say it's going to increase their thinking distance. Alternatively, if they ask you what things will increase their thinking distance, say alcohol or drugs, they will count each of those as just one valid answer though. So if they ask you for two of them, you're going to need another option. The second uh, most common thing which can affect it is tiredness. Tiredness can be almost as big a killer as being drunk on the roads. So you've got being drunk, being tired, and the third and final one, and it's also something which is legislated against quite strongly, um, similarly to alcohol, and that is if there are distractions, particularly something like a mobile phone. Those are the only three options you need to remember. If a person is drunk, if they're tired, or if they're distracted for, by something like using a mobile phone, then all of those things are going to increase their thinking distance. Braking distance is how far the car goes once the driver's foot is on the brake. So that is unaffected by anything which interferes with their state of mind. So all the previous answers, those only relate to thinking distance. I can't stress this enough. Make sure that you are just talking about thinking distance if you're talking about the previous three. With braking distance, you've got three other answers which you need to be aware of. And they're fairly straightforward. They're all things to do with the car not being able to get a decent grip or not being able to stop its wheels going round as easily. So, the first one is weather conditions, but you really need to be specific. They will typically phrase the question as what things could increase the braking distance. So it's not enough to say weather. Saying that will not get you the mark. You need to be specific about the type of weather. Say that the road is icy, or say that the road is covered in snow, or say that the road has it's been raining and it's wet. Those three options are fine, nothing else. Because of course, sunshine is actually gonna make it better for braking. So, say it's icy, or say it's snowy, or say it's wet. Do not give any other answers when it comes to weather conditions. Secondly, you need to talk about the thing with the part of the car which actually contacts the road, the tire. If the tires are worn out, then that is going to increase braking distance as well. That's why there's legislation in this country that specifies how much tread you've got to have on your tire. So make sure again, you are saying worn tires. If you just say tires, that isn't gonna be enough. You need to say that they're worn out or that they're going bald. And the third option in, is very, very similar and that's the condition of the brakes. And again, you need to be specific. You need to say that they're worn out. Again, this is why we have uh, MOT checks on all cars that are over three years old in this country to make sure that they're up to a standard where they are going to be able to stop in time. Let me summarize those three possible options again for you quickly. The things which will increase your braking distance are weather conditions such as snow, ice, or rain, which reduce the friction between the tire and the road, and so make it more slippy. Secondly, if the tires are worn, then again, that's going to reduce the friction between the tire and the road and increase your braking distance. Make sure that you say the tires are worn. And thirdly, if the brakes are worn, then that's going to make it more difficult for them to stop the wheel turning around in the first place. Again, make sure you say that the brakes are worn. 
That's all there really is to know about stopping distance. The details are fairly straightforward, there is nothing particularly complex there. The trick is in making sure that you're either talking about thinking distance when they say thinking distance, or you're talking about breaking distance when they say breaking distance. And if it is breaking distance, making sure that you're not just saying breaks, you're saying worn breaks. You're not just saying tires, you're saying worn tires. And you're not just saying the weather, you're being very specific about that and saying that the road is icy, that the road's covered in snow, or that the road's wet. If you get those fine details right, then you'll get the marks. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone. And if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.